Hello, everybody. I am Nina Soden, urban fantasy author of the Sector C series and the Blood Angel series. And today I'm really excited because I have Lauren Rhodes with me. She is the co-author with Brian Thomas of the novels Lost Angels, um, which is about a succubus who sets her sights on an angel and ends up possessed by a mortal girl's soul. That's awesome. The sequel, Angelus Rose, is that what it's called? Angelus mm -hmm. Rose, came out in February 2020. So there are two books you can pick up to check out that series. She is also the author of The Dangerous Type, Kill by Numbers, and No More Heroes, a space opera trilogy set after a galactic war has wiped out much of humanity. She's the author of 199 Cemeteries to See Before You Die and Wish You Were Here, Adventures in Cemetery Travel. She blogs about graveyards as travel destinations at cemeterytravel.com. And you will not be surprised when I tell you that she likes long walks under the moonlight and through the graveyards. That is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Tell me just first, I, I have to ask about this. Why graveyards? Why are you obsessed with graveyards and traveling to graveyards? I personally love like tombstone rubbing, but what, what draws you to graveyards? It's probably the memento of Maury aspect, but um, I just find it really peaceful. I really like to travel and my husband's one of those piece, people who will drag me to every restaurant in town until he settles on one. Okay. So I drag him to cemeteries and make him look at every gravestone. And I just, I like the, the peace and the sunshine and bird song, all of that. Where is your favorite cemetery? Changes, but probably my mo most favorite is Highgate in London, which is uh, just romantic and beautiful and it's a little overgrown it went wild for a while and now it's being reclaimed and so it's got foxes and all kinds of birds it's just beautiful victorian statuary all of that you don't usually hear romantic and graveyard used together that's a great descriptive i love that you don't usually hear that together but that's very interesting it's a different it's a different viewpoint yeah well it's it's full of all these angels that were carved in, you know, the Victorian era. Yeah. And uh, the ivy's kind of overgrown all of them. So sometimes you'll come around a corner and all you'll see is a face in the greenery or, you know, a hand pointing to heaven or something like that. I, uh, it gives me chills. It's really beautiful. That is awesome. So we'll move on to your books. Tell me a little bit about this series, The Lost Angels and Angelus Rose. What is the name of the series? And tell me about each of these books. It's called As Above, So Below. Um, it started out as a short story that I wrote for Brian as a gift. And he kind of jumped in on it. And uh, as soon as I, I thought the first short story was going to be all there was to it. And the next thing I know, he's sending me chapter two and chapter three. And uh, the end of chapter three is where Lorelai is possessed by the mortal girl. And I could not wait to jump back in. <laughs> and he just kind of took off from there. So. Um, we describe it as kind of Romeo and Juliet if Romeo had wings and Juliet had a barbed tail. So. Okay, so it's an angel and a demon then, mm -hmm. yes? Yes. Why did you want to write about angels and demons falling in love? Well, what could be more opposite, right? And if they can find common ground, then I think there's hope for all of us. Now that's romantic, yes. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, wait. Okay, but it turned my email off so it doesn't ping at us anymore. Okay. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. So, okay. okay, is this a, what genre would you say this is in then? Paranormal romance, I guess, is where you'd put it. Um, okay. It, modern it, day, or is it? it modern day, it's set okay. in LA. Um, it skews a little on the darker side. But, you know, she's a devil, so I guess you know that going in. Yeah. Okay. And it's adult, I would assume, yes. or is it? Okay. Very. Okay. But very. Very adult. <laughs> okay. What interested you in 
Lorelei the succubus. Why did she, why succubus? Now I love a, a succubus. That's a great character to write. So why succubus for you? I had a friend in college who was just amazingly beautiful. I mean, just, you know, very natural uh, girl next door kind of thing, but really curvy and she had huge dark eyes. And she could just walk into a room and light it up and everybody just focused on her. Mm -hmm. But she was, she was the life of the party everywhere she went. It wasn't all about her. It was about making fun for everyone else. Yeah. And I, um, I was really inspired by that because I'm not that sort of person at all. And so uh, when I first started writing the story, as I was kind of channeling Kimmy, how would Kimmy handle this? And uh, there's an aspect to Lorelai where she bites off a lot more than she can chew. And that's definitely true to Kim, that she'd get herself into situations because she was, she, she was so good hearted, she just assumed everybody else was as well. Mm -hmm. So, so does she... Does she know that you've written the story kind of based? No. no. Are no, you still lost, in touch? No, we lost touch a long time ago. And so um, I hope someday she will hear about it and be flattered. That's awesome. So I've never worked with a co-writer. I mean, I've written short stories that have gone into compilations, but I've never worked actually chapter by chapter with somebody. How is that process? And did you enjoy it? Would you do it again? I would. Um, it, we finally hit a rhythm. You know, at first I wrote my bits and he wrote his bits and then I kind of leave them together. Yeah. But uh, the farther we got into the story, I would fly down to LA and just sit there with a laptop and he would pace and dictate and mm -hmm. I kind of kibitz as, as we went. And so um, it was amazing to me how much of it was in his head. Yeah. So a lot of the character stuff is mine. A lot of the dialogue is his, but okay. it's, it, you can't really, uh, there are some scenes I know he wrote that one, but there's so much that we worked on together. I don't think you can see a division anymore. That's really cool. And how long did that process take you guys from concept where you wrote that little short story for him to the completion of the actual first novel? How long did that take? <laughs> well, originally they were one book. Okay. Um, and it was huge it, when this was back in the days where you printed things out and edited on paper and it, it was more than a ream of paper to print the whole thing out it was huge so it was both books the los both angeles books. okay okay yeah and um the the first book it's probably not giving anything away just since you know that she's possessed there's an exorcism okay and that seemed like a uh natural climax in the first book okay and so that meant that um well the second book is about half the second book is new i guess because uh, i had to reset the characters up and all of that to get us into the climax but um i think the first draft took us three years pretty wow. much from from the first story to the end um but then it it took a while to find a publisher and then uh, and who is it published with? Well, now it's with Automatism Press, which is my press, okay. um, which I founded back in the 90s, a long time ago. Um, mostly published uh, nonfiction for years and years and years, but then I started with the novels. But um, it was uh, Los Angeles was on a small press for a couple of years, and then I got the rights back and decided if I was going to publish both books, I'd put them both out on my press. Okay, very cool. So you said earlier that this book is kind of like a Romeo and Juliet with angels and demons or, mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a favorite Shakespeare play? Is it no. Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> no, strangely enough, it's not. There's a lot I love about Romeo and Juliet. Um, and I'm really partial to the Leonardo DiCaprio version. Okay. Okay. So what is your favorite Shakespeare play? My favorite is The Tempest. Okay. And there's something about Prospero having all this magic power and what he uses it for is to protect and entertain his daughter. And I, I find that really, really sweet that the heart of have all this immense power is love. Yeah. 
So have you thought about doing a book that is more like that, something based in that area? Yeah, funny you should mention that. Um, I'm working on a, a new series now that's uh, uh, a witch. And Ooh. she's kind of a monster, not hunter so much. She she puts herself in between humans and magical creatures. And okay. sometimes it's the humans that need protection and often it's the magical creatures. So... Um, yeah, there's a little bit of The Tempest in that book, I think. Very cool. Okay, so you've written about sex-positive succubi. Mm -hmm. Explain what that means. <laughs> I, I mean, wanna... succubus is very sexual in nature, mm -hmm. but what is a sex-positive succubi? I didn't want sex to be the reason anybody got damned. Okay. I think, I mean, it's probably more information than you need, but... I think sex is, is beautiful and it a, should be a sacrament, right? If you're doing it correctly. Right. Um, and I didn't want to see that lead to anybody being damned. I mean, it's such a wonderful gift. I, I just can't see it as evil. And so I wanted to make sure that people are damned for all kinds of reasons, but usually it's jealousy or addiction or, you know, something negative, not because they're having sex. Gotcha. I love that message. I think that's fantastic. Um, what is your journey? What has your journey looked like in terms of publishing? Now, I know it's published right now with you and your press, which I assume you publish other author stuff, or is it just solely your own? No, um, I published, uh, oh, it's the best book. It's it's called Black Light by Martha Allard, and it's... Um, set in the 80s about a rock band with ghosts and psychic vampires and just all sorts of amazing stuff. It's, I love that book. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and I, I'm thinking about going back and doing more anthologies, um, maybe next year. It's with the world being the way it is, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do you know, yeah. moving forward. My cat Ooh. is going to shout at us now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, so you took this one not, you didn't publish it yourself at first. Why did you make that decision as opposed to just publishing it under your own press at first? It was my first novel. Okay. And so I wanted kind of the... Traditional route. Yeah, just, you know, there's something about having somebody else publish your first book that it's a little seal of approval. Okay. Um, it was a very small press that I met at one of the World Horror Conventions. And almost everything else that they published was strictly horror. And so my book was kind of not fish, not fall in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, they, did, they did a good job with it, I thought. But in the end, when it came to putting the second book out, I was like, well, I think I could could do a better cover and get the text exactly the way I want it and all of that. So that was how I ended up doing it myself. And how many books do you currently have published? I think Unsafe Words, the short story collection that just came out is the, it's the 14th one that I've either, yeah, either written or edited. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that is <laughs> the question. You said that Lost Angels was the first novel. Mm -hmm. So when was that one published then originally? Originally it was 2014. And so then... since 2014, you have done... No, 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 no. No, because no, the, the first books I had published were nonfiction. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Makes me feel a little bit better about my writing <laughs> speed. <laughs> Dear Lord. I've been doing this for a while. So in there, my, my first book um, was a collection of essays and fiction uh, that I edited for Automatism, and that came out in 94. So. Okay. So how many novels do you have out? Five so far. Five. So the, the two angel books and the three space opera books. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about these space opera books. Well, Give me the elevator uh, pitch. The elevator pitch. All right. Uh, humanity moved out to the galaxy and started a war that they couldn't win and have been pretty much 
pared back to just a fraction of what they were. And uh, the main character of the books worked for the human empire and was imprisoned for 20 years. So she's come out of prison into a brand new galaxy where she has to figure out her place. And uh, she lands with a crew of um, journalists that are investigating what's going on in the world and kind of standing up for humanity along the way. So Very cool. Yeah, Strong female fun. characters, it sounds like. Yeah. I love that. And which of these two series do you see continuing or are they both continuing? Are either one of them done? I, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing's ever finished, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd like to write another book in the space opera series. Um, at the end of the trilogy, Raina has, she's finally found a guy that she can spend her time with and he happens to be a nine foot tall lizard. And, and I'd like to write a book about them. Um, okay. But I, I don't know, I haven't started it yet. Um, with uh, with Lorelai and Azaziel, I think those are done. Uh, there, there is some stuff for a third book, but it was pretty bleak, and I, I just don't feel like I want to spend time with that right now. I want them to have their happy ending and stay with it. But I've been writing short stories in that universe, and so um, one of them's in Unsafe Worlds. It's a, uh, uh, there's a throwaway line in Angelus Rose where Lorelai's talking about she uh, worked in L.A in the 70s in the music industry and I thought geez I wonder who she met so uh I was listening to a little Led Zeppelin and there's a a line in Days and Confused about never bargained for you and I thought geez oh. is that a story about a succubus or not so okay so there's there's some short stories that may come out that are in that world that's nice and unsafe words just came out it was just released yeah. right Yes. So yeah, show you what it looks like. Oh, I love it. That's it. Oh, that it, oh, that cover's beautiful. All right, a little reflective there. But yes, I'm really happy with the cover. That's Lynn Hansen. She's amazing. And that is just a compilation of short stories? Yeah, it's 15 short stories, um, fantasy, science fiction, and horror. They're, they're all sort of on the darker side. But Are they all tied together in some way or no? no? Just individual short stories. Yeah. Very cool. And has that um, brought good, I mean, are, is it selling well? Are you doing well with that one? Yeah, it just came out the 20th of September. And this oh, is, so, so new. Yeah, early October when we're recording this. So yeah, it's just a couple of weeks, but I've started, it's out on book tour, this blog tours this week, so. Okay. We'll, see that goes. well, I will include links to both the series that you have, as well as that one in the description below so that people can pick those up because I think that's Thank fantastic. You. I can't wait to check those out. Um, tell me what you're working on now. I mean, other than the short stories, is there anything big coming up that uh, you're working on? Yeah, the, the, the book about the witch, I think is going to be called the death of memory. Um, and, okay. uh, she meets a vampire and they ex they explore San Francisco, which is where I'm from. But it, so it's kind of a love letter to the city. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, we're in such flux now. A lot of the older places are closing and may not open up again. And so I just, I want to express my love for them before everything's gone. And San Francisco is so beautiful. It's just, it's breathtaking in areas. We, um have visited there and I used to live in California. So I just, I love California. I love the coast, everything about it. So I love anything that has to do with, with Los Angeles and California in general. So very nice. All right. Tell me why writing, how did you start writing? And are you one of the authors that actually gets to do this as a full-time job? Is this your full-time job? It is. Yeah. And it has been, for a while. Some years are better than other years, but, um, and this year it's been hard to write. Yeah. It, it's been hard to concentrate. And I know I'm not alone in that, but. No, you are not. Yeah. 
I just, something's finally turned the corner and I guess I, we've been in really strict quarantine since February. My, my daughter has a chronic illness and so we're just not going out. Yeah. And I don't know, something unlocked finally. And I finished your short story last week. I've got another one started this week and I finally feel like I'm moving forward. So. Yeah. And how long know. are your short stories roughly? How many words? Usually they're around 5,000. Um, okay. This one last week was, was short. It was, I think, a hair under 2,000 words. Okay. But, you know, it was one of those things where it just poured out and every word was the right word. And it, that doesn't happen to me very often. I do a lot of, you know, sloppy first drafts. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I, I just word vomit onto the page yes. and then I you clean it up later. You can always cut it later. <laughs> That's yep. right. That's right. You got to fix it later, but got to get those words out to start. Yeah. If you don't get them out on the page, you can't edit a blank page. Right. So what is, who are the authors that inspire you? What do you choose to read or enjoy reading? Or is there an author that if they have a new book out, you're going to buy it, whether you know what it is or not? I'm, I'm discovering L.S. Johnson, okay. who uh, I started with her work from her short stories her most recent collection was rare birds and they're they're just magical she has such a way of putting words together that you just sink into it and yeah. you know you, you feel like at the end of the story you have to come up and catch your breath because you've forgotten to breathe through the whole thing yeah. um and she's got a series I believe it's going to be four books, but the third one just came out. That's um, been described as Jane Austen meets Lovecraft. Ooh. Yes, so I have that on my my pile. That's the next for me to pick up. And um, let me see, who else can I tell you about? Uh, it's about time to read the Halloween Country again. Okay. Every. Every October, you got to reread Bradbury, so I'm yes. in the mood for that too. Okay. Um, yeah. Very cool. And how long have you been writing? I mean, you said you've been doing this for a while. So, how yeah. long have you been writing? When did you start? Uh, seriously, I went to Clarion in 1986. So that was a while ago. And, you know, for a long time, all I wrote were short stories. Um, it, it took longer to work up to a book. So. And when was the first time you considered yourself an author? A real author? Yeah. Um, I got invited to a four-woman anthology in 2008. I think it came out in 2009. Um, and he... Uh, the first story in the anthology was the first story of Lost Angels. Okay. And I had sent it out to a magazine and they, they held it for the longest time. And I finally met the reader at one of the conventions and he said, I love this story. I kept kicking it back up to the editors and saying, we have to publish this story. And they, they wouldn't do it. So eventually it was rejected from them. But he, when he found me, he's like, it's that story is still available. I want to put an anthology together and I want that story for the anthology. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, just that kind of support from somebody. Um, it's the first story in the book, you know, and <laughs> I, I, it, that gave me the confidence, you know, if, if I can write something that someone will remember, you know, yeah. they read it in slush and they remembered it years later, then okay, I must be doing something right. Right. Absolutely. I think. It's interesting to ask authors that question of when you first saw yourself as an author, because so many authors were authors before that time, before it clicked that, mm -hmm. hey, I'm really doing this. Um, so I find it interesting. When well, think, you know, we're kind of, I don't know, maybe it's just women, maybe it's not men so much, but, you know, to claim that you're a writer is a big thing. It's huge. You know, it's okay to say I write, yep. but to say that you are a writer or to say that you're an author yep. seems like you're, you know, blowing things up that, that maybe you don't own yet. So yep. 
I had yes. three published novels before I actually said, I'm an author. I'm, wow. I'm an author. So, I mean, it's, it's, it is crazy how long it takes us to come to that realization that it's okay to put that label on ourselves yeah, and to accept it and believe it. Yeah. You know, That's so very good I don't know. It's, it's strange to me that, uh, we can't just easily put that confidence on ourselves and, and mm -hmm. that label on without feeling well, like somebody's going to ju judge. Right. The first thing you get published, right? That ought to be it. That's yep. the only check you need. You, you, you've made the, the cut. You're now a writer. And that's right. That's right. It just happens. Doesn't yeah. seem like enough. So. Yeah. so what advice would you give to a new author or somebody interested in becoming an author? Don't give up. Do not give up. It what is the time. Is that the best advice you've ever been given to? Or what I is met, the best advice you've been given? I met Ray Bradbury when I was just starting out and um, he was up in San Francisco for a, a book event. And I you know he was a hero of mine. And so I had to wait till everybody else left the bookstore because I just could not get up the nerve to talk to him. Yeah. And I finally said, look, I'm writing this book and I just have to know everything. I feel like there's so much I don't know and it's kind of overwhelming me and and I don't know what I'm doing. And, and he said, stop thinking so much and just write. And yeah. he was absolutely right. You know, and it goes back to that you've got to slap the words down and then you can get them in the right order. But if you don't have anything to work with, then you don't have anything. Right. Yeah. And, and a story in your head doesn't do anybody any good. So you've got to get it on the paper. Yep. Yep. I completely agree with that. Got to get the words on the paper before you can do anything else. Yeah. All right. Is there anything that you would like to tell my viewers that we have not already discussed? Hmm. I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Maybe we've covered everything. We it it seems it like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I like to end all of my interviews with the James Lipton Inside the Actor Studio 10 questions. So don't think too much. There are no wrong answers. Whatever comes to mind, that's the answer you say. Got it? Okay. Okay. What is your favorite word? Cerulean. Hmm. What is your least favorite word? Politics. What turns you on? Uh, people who are really excited about something and it can be anything. Okay, passion, yeah. yeah. What turns you off? Judgment. Okay. What noise or sound do you love? Bird song. What noise or sound do you hate? Really loud motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> What is your favorite curse word? Motherfucker. No. It just Love applies it. to so many things. <laughs> okay. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I'd like to be a tour guide. I think Ooh. that would be really cool. That would be fun. Yeah. What profession would you not want to attempt? I keep a list. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things. Um, there's a film festival in San Francisco and every year they do uh, a bunch of documentaries and I always make it a, a practice of seeing one for a career that I absolutely would not want to do. You know, I figure I might as well learn about it. And one of them was about uh, being on one of those container ships and being at sea, you know, and you're in, it's a very large boat, but it's a very large ocean. And yeah. you know, it just, it was Perfect. So I, I would not like to work on a container ship. <laughs> I would probably second that. Yeah. All right. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? We need to talk about Lorelai. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me and coming on and sharing about your process and your writing and your books. I'm so excited to check those out. I got to put them on my to read list. 
for anybody out there that is watching this that wants to read her books, the details are down below in the description. Click the links, buy the books, and read and support her. All right, everybody, that's it for now. Bye-bye.